to another Sunday School Short. Today we are in Matthew 26 and Mark 14, walking through the New Testament chronologically as it happened, as it was written. This is just a small synopsis of my daily Bible reading. You get into God's Word, be a daily Bible reader. I'm just a spark plug encouraging you to do that. Matthew 26, the, Jesus is talking to the disciples. Two days from Passover, the Son of Man will be handed over and crucified. The Jewish leaders, or the religious leaders, were meeting at Caiaphas' house, who was the high priest at the time, plotting how to capture and kill Jesus, but not during the Passover. They didn't want to start a riot, that type of thing. Verses 6 through 13 parallels Mark 14 as well, and also John 12. Back in Bethany, which was a suburb of Jerusalem, the way we think of it, while Jesus was eating, a woman came with a beautiful alabaster bar, jar of expensive perfume and poured it over Jesus' head. The disciples were indignant. What a waste. We could have sold this and given it to the poor. Mark says it was up to a year's earning. Jesus says, why are you criticizing this woman for doing this good thing to me? You always have the poor, but you won't always have me among you. Uh, I've, she's poured out this perfume to prepare my body for burial. Wherever the good news is preached, Throughout the world, this woman's deed will be remembered and discussed. Verses 14 through 16, Judas Iscariot went to the Jewish leaders and asked, How much will you give me to betray Jesus to you? They were delighted, it says in Mark 14. Um, they promised to give him some money, and Matthew clarifies that. There was 30 pieces of silver, and he began looking for an opportunity. Verses 17 through 19, the first day of the festival of unleavened bread. Inside this festival, the Passover is inside of this festival. The disciples came to Jesus. Where do you want us to prepare the Passover meal for you? And Jesus says, as you go into the city, and we find out from Luke um, 22 that this was Peter and John. As you go into the city, there'll be a man carrying a pitcher of water. We found that out in Mark 14. He'll meet you. Follow him. At the house he enters, say to the owner, the teacher asks, where's the guest room? where we can eat the Passover meal. Uh, when, where I can eat the Passover meal with my disciples. He'll take you to an upstairs room that'll be already set up. Verses 20 through 30. That evening Jesus came down with the twelve and said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. And each said, Am I the one, Lord? And in verse 23, One of you has just eaten from the bowl with me will betray me. So he's saying, hey, one of you guys at this table is going to betray me. Uh, for the Son of Man will die as the Scriptures declared long ago. How terrible will it be for the one who betrays me? And Judas says, am I the one? And Jesus responds, you have said it. Not necessarily in front of everybody. The reading doesn't indicate that, but maybe off to the side he asked. And so we don't know that for sure, but that's the kind of the context of it. Uh, Jesus took the bread blessed it, broke it, and said, Take, eat, for this is my body. And then he took a cup of wine, he gave thanks to it, or gave thanks for it, drank. He says, Drink this. This is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. In um, verses 31 through 35, and he also says, Hey, I won't drink this until I come to you again uh, until I drink it with you again in my Father's kingdom. Verses 31 through 35. Um, on their way to the Mount of Olives, Jesus says to you, Tonight all of you will desert me. Um, in verse 32. But after I've been raised from the dead, I will go ahead of you to Galilee and meet you there. So he's telling them, Hey, I'm going to meet you there after I'm raised from the dead. But they don't remember this. We'll find that out in the days to come. Peter says, even if everyone else deserts you, I will, I never will. Jesus says, before the rooster crows, you'll deny me three times. Mark 14 says, before the rooster crows, twice. And we'll get to that in a second. Peter denied that this would ever happen, so did the, did the other disciples. Verses 20, 36 through 46. Jesus went with them to the olive grove called Gethsemane. Uh, sit here for a while while I go there and pray, verse 36. Over there and pray. He took Peter, James, and John a little bit further. And he said, My soul is crushed. I am in grief to the point of death. Stay here and watch with me. We find out from other um, gospels that it's about, he goes a little bit farther than them even. About a stone's throw away, it says in other gospels. He went a little farther, bowed his head to the ground, said, Father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken from me. Yet, I want your will to be done, not mine. He returned. He found the disciples sleeping. 
can't you watch with me even one hour? Verse 41, keep watch and pray so that you will not be given into temptation where the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Jesus left the second time and prayed, Father, if this cup can't be taken away unless I drink it, your will be done. He returned, he found him sleeping again. He went and prayed for a third time, saying the same type things. He came back to his disciples and said, have your rest. But look, time has come. The Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of, hands of sinners. Verses 47 through 56. Judas arrived with a crowd of armed men sent by the Jewish leaders. Judas had given them a prearranged signal of a kiss. So he came straight to Jesus, said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. They grabbed him and arrested him. One man pulled his sword out and struck the high priest's slave, taking his ear off. John 18 tells us that man was Peter. And Jesus said, put away your sword. Those who live by the sword die by the sword. Verse 53, don't you realize that I could ask my father for thousands of angels to protect us and he would send them instantly in, in 54. But if he did, uh, would the scriptures be fulfilled that described what was happening right now? And Jesus said to the crowd, am I some dangerous criminal that you have come with clubs and swords? Why didn't you arrest me? Uh, when I was at the temple, I'm there every day teaching. Mark adds that one that a young man, possibly John Mark himself, Mark, the gospel writer is called John Mark, um, followed behind in a long linen shirt. The mob tried to grab him and he slipped out of his shirt and ran away naked. Verses 57 through 68. Uh, the arresting party went to Caiaphas' house, the high priest. Peter followed from a distance. Mark uh, says he was warming himself by the fire. The religious leaders were trying to find a witness to lie about Jesus. Finally, they found two men that would lie, Je saying, Jesus said, I am uh, I'm able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days, which isn't exactly what he said. He told them to destroy it, and he would rebuild it in ten days, talking about himself. The high priest said, aren't you going to answer these charges? Jesus remained silent. Oftentimes, hey, when we're accused of things, it's best to be silent as well. That's a good side note principle here. The, the high priest said, Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus says, You have said it. The high priest tore his clothes and said, Blasphemy. Do we need other witnesses? What is your verdict? And the other said, He deserves to die. They spit in his face. Someone slapped him and said, Prophesy to us, Messiah. Who hit you that time? And Peter was outside. A servant girl said to him, Verses 69 through 75, you were there. You were one of those with Jesus. I don't know what you're talking about. Later, another servant girl says, This is the man who was with Jesus. I don't even know the man. And later, another bystander says, You must be one of them because I tell I could tell by your Galilean accent. Accent. Curse be on me if I am lying. I don't know the man. And immediately, the rooster crowed. Suddenly, Jesus' word flooded through Peter's mind. And Mark adds that the first crowing was after the first denial of Peter. The second crowing was after the third denial. And it says, Peter went away weeping. Let's stand up for Jesus. Stand up for Jesus. Uh, be about his business. Let's don't be, and I'm speaking to myself. Every time I talk to you, I'm talking to myself. Let's don't do foolish things or selfish things. Let's walk with God and serve his purposes. Be his hands, his feet, his heart. God bless you, like, subscribe, and share.